Mm-hmm. Can we just go to Nancy? We can go to Nancy. <laughs> We're chopping at the bed hair. <laughs> yeah, so like episode 15, which um, if y'all who are on our Nancy journey with us didn't know, we've actually already seen this episode. We saw it out of context when we were preparing for Tom Swift and seeing it in context. I want to take all of our temperatures. How did you feel with the in context watch? I loved this episode so much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I saw it through different eyes. I like and knowing now knowing Tom fully, it's it just gave me a different um feeling about seeing him again. Like I just cared so much about him. And I loved the way that his dynamic with the whole Drew crew, with the team, especially with Nancy, they were like they could have been besties if Tom like came back, which I'm going to campaign. I want him to come back in the final season desperately. I don't care if it doesn't fit into the mm-hmm. final season plot. Like, I just want to see Tom again. And I know like the ending of Tom Swift, how, they're not even on the same timeline. So he could still come back because I know the ending of Tom Swift was like a lot for him to like mm-hmm. come back and deal with all of that. But like, I just want to see him again. He was so much fun in the show. Um, but yeah, I thought the seeing his world come into Horseshoe Bay and seeing their reactions to like science where they're all like spooky and supernatural was so much fun to give them like a kind of like people are constantly looking at them like, what is going on with you guys? And they were doing that with Tom with all of his gadgets and Barclay <laughs> and everything. And it was so it was a different layer of uh, of like comedy. It just it mixed up the world. And it was ugh, I loved it. Yeah, it very much felt a bit like a superhero show because I feel like Nancy follows the same kind of procedural format that like the Flash would, but the one area it never really leans into is the like technological mumbo jumbo and seeing Tom there with his like nanotechnology and all of that to solve these problems. It very much felt like that. But yeah, it was so interesting to revisit because obviously great seeing Tom again. It was wonderful to see him. Um, But on the other hand, this episode is just like an unusual standalone quality that it was so easily approachable for us back then that you could just, dive right into the story but now watching it with the context you're like hold on a minute all this stuff with nancy and the hudsons is going on in the background never really came to the forefront so it was pretty apt that we watched the two of them to this and the next one together because it very we always do this every time we do a double feature it feels like that was part one and part two and that very much felt like that but we'll get to episode 16 shortly but this was such an interesting example because they had they had that like standalone little adventure in the middle but at the same time there was so much storyline there that we didn't really understand the first time around. And now you can appreciate, you can see the conflict that Nancy feels over being a Hudson and a Drew. And it kind of worked really well with Tom. And it's so interesting to watch it back now to see Tom again, because even though that was his first appearance in the Drew universe, it felt like to us, like we were catching up with an old friend because it was kind of out of its own timeline. And I just wanted to say how wonderful that was because I do, I miss Tom Swift a lot. And I don't think I really realized that until we saw just how like, vibrant and energetic and how he just so much up fun exactly it's just fun <laughs> no one has fun anymore <laughs> uh, but, no i miss tom a lot while watching this episode yeah. i just i hate that we don't have a season two for him i he, uh i did we watch our review of um this episode <laughs> two basically said the same things she had said before so it's like really great (laughs) down to the like like the difference between the technology and the supernatural and how that was clashing and um how they were all surprised by each other and michael you did say that it was like a superhero oh did i you did you said it's like a mix of different genres um personally for me this is my least favorite nancy drew episode which is saying something because that's like what you were saying read with Wendy like a, a slower Nancy episode is like still better than anything else well a lot of different things on television for me it's just I loved all the Tom stuff um the fans and stuff was bringing me down but like the Tom stuff I liked it <laughs> that's, that's where we were different but the Tom stuff um I just you could see how well he fits into um, this universe in yeah. uh, but still doing his own thing and I liked that Nancy got another person to have a different dynamic with and that he was someone with an outside perspective on what's going on uh, with her in because he comes from that world of like you do have to wear armor like you do have to protect who you are in these circles and he teaches her that and she you know 
helps him get to a point where he's going to talk to his father spoiler alert for tom swift y'all his father is i don't like that man i don't think but we don't like him um seeing this in context now knowing what happens in tom swift i like him even less Mm -hmm. uh but tom is amazing because despite all of that he's always looking for something that's going to further his legacy and his father's legacy and to be able to reach for the stars i mean literally he is on a mission to find a meteorite that's going to help his dad get to saturn like it's just um his tom has such a big heart um and a fierce wit and great fashion sense and it's just cw made a mistake by canceling tom swift Mm -hmm. (laughs) like they should have just kept him and promoted that show uh but just to get to the fans and real quick i didn't like it because it felt out of place and felt like something that should have happened earlier I can see that, but it was like the first time that I had watched some like a storyline for them that felt really like organic and natural, and I really enjoyed watching it. Toward the end, it got kind of like, yeah, okay, I understand, I get it, I got, I got what you were trying to do. Um, like you can see the lesson, but I, I don't know, I like seeing them vulnerable, having those conversations. Like they can really understand each other on a different level now. Um, I just really enjoy. I, anytime Nick gets really vulnerable and personal like that I just I love it I love him and Mm -hmm. I love hearing his perspective and him stepping into his own I I don't know he's just coming into his own I think in this group where he can bring his perspective forward and seeing him with Tom I love that too yes and I loved uh, I can't gush enough about how much I love these writers and these characters because seeing Nick not be toxic about their kiss like if this had happened in like the 2000s he would have been like Ugh. and like they didn't like that's not even a thought in any of these characters minds and for me that's just really heartwarming to see how that there is growth in this kind of storytelling there is a storytelling where that doesn't have to be like a joke mm-hmm. like right like nick is being a really good friend and uh, i don't know I, I don't even know what else to say but i just i really loved that scene too and once again, just being reminded that Nick and Ace are two of the best male characters <laughs> that <laughs> television may have ever seen. <laughs> Salt of the earth. Um, no, I agree. I thought they handled some of the storylines really well. I do. I I understand where you're coming from, Sabrina, because I worry you know, sometimes when the CW shows can try to to tackle a lesson or a serious storyline, the thing that lets it down is that it comes out of nowhere. And maybe that's what that felt like, because you thought that Nick and George would have had us had an important conversation like that now. But I do think they handled it well enough. I, I, I get maybe it's the acting, maybe it was the dialogue or the storylines. But I definitely it was interesting to rewatch it because again, I start I remember watching it the first time and instantly drawn to the character of Nick because of how well that scene was acted. And it was interesting now to watch it with all those feelings that you have for Nick because again, Nick iconic character, brilliant, brilliant, eh, and so easy to root for. And yeah, I really enjoyed the scene. I do get where you're coming from. Sometimes scenes like that can feel like they came come out of nowhere. But again, I thought I thought it was handled well. I really enjoyed it and I really liked it. And it made me care more about Nick and George because they're so stuck in the middle of this like supernatural storyline. They never have any time for each other or for, for serious conversations. So maybe that's why it felt like it came out of nowhere. And then the fact that George got that uh, quirk in at the end when Nick asked her if it was okay that he kissed Tom, she was like, I'm literally sharing my body with a supernatural entity. <laughs> like, I wonder what we thought of that the first time watching that out of context, but now we got it and now we know that. <laughs> I feel like probably confusion like excuse me you're what um, <laughs> but like I think so for me the the writing around it for what it was was fine it's more so there are two characters that have are supposedly living together um and she's never seen him code switch which is that you've never like at all never because he mentions his friends and and of course he's in touch with his family and there are black people in Hurstory Bay not as many but he knows some he's been interacting with them so I was like he's never seen it okay um and I was like she doesn't code switch either I feel like she would but then I was like is this a discuss am I looking too deeply is this like a discussion between um someone who did not grow up in a predominantly white area who's a person of color and someone who did grow up in a predominantly white area who's a, a person of color and those are two different living experiences she would not experience not just because they're two different races but she just would not experience the same things that he would it's not him coming to Hershey Bay is a culture shock she lived her her entire life it would not be for her so I was like I was like 
what did, what did I want from them? I think what I wanted from them was to be a more nuanced in it. For yeah, I can, I agree with you because when they started the storytelling, I was like, oh, I kind of like this. But then where it ended up kind of with them, it wasn't it wasn't exactly the payoff I was hoping from when where the story started. It was kind of more about them being like, oh, we need to be honest with each other. And I was like, yeah, but I also wanted a little bit more of the conversation they were having. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it ended up being about like, oh, I'm going to post you on social media or like, oh, I'm going to be more honest with you. I was like, okay, but I feel like we can continue the conversation we were having a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, it lost a little bit as it kept going on. And yeah. That's kind of where the episodic problem comes in. Because like I said, the stories like that can sometimes pop up out of nowhere, be dealt with in the episode, then never dealt with again. And then that kind of undercuts the importance of it. Because I maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see them having conversations like that again, unless something else like a plot forces them to. And maybe it would have been a little bit more poignant or meaningful if you got to see them have it all along and get to see them have it after this. But yeah, like Reed said, it was just it was wrapped up in the end of the episode just because... Nick got hurt and then that gave them that like, nice moment together where they had that quick conversation and that was that like when you think about it that storyline was handled in maybe what two three scenes and maybe it needed a little bit more room than that to breathe yeah but then also putting it in the context of time which I keep trying to remember that about Nancy Drew they've been together for two months potentially mm -hmm. Yeah, but the, that, the show's time is very confusing to me. It's, it's all over the place. Uh, but yeah, so I think that's the only thing that really um, brought it down for me. I just wanted it to be more nuanced. Other than that, it's a really great, solid episode of Nancy Drew that establishes Tom in a way that makes him feel like he's already a part of this universe um, when he clearly has just walked through the door. I also thought that the they, I love that they did a lower stakes um mission in order to introduce him like it's a mission for him but it also just seeds information for what's going to happen next in nancy drew but that overpowering situation we learn a little bit more about mm -hmm. the women in white um and that the bickerins are actually now the road back and it, it that's us set up what's going to happen as we move forward and also there was time for beanie watch Mm. beanie watch i the whole episode i was like what does this mean this is a whole new <laughs> <laughs> whole new layer of beanie watch what does it mean why does she have it on it's the black one <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> i couldn't figure it out I, I have no real theories i was trying to put it together okay like she does she feel insecure because she's with tom and he's kind of a big personality and he's just as smart as she is does she feel insecure is she is that I, I don't know. Did she just have it on because it was cold at night? Mm -hmm. I was trying. I was trying. And I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and what was interesting to me was when he said, when they said he has an outfit for every occasion, Nancy kind of responded by taking the beanie out and like desperately putting it on. And it's like, is that her outfit? Is that her like superhero costume? Is that when she feels most comfortable doing her thing? And I was like, is that, is it, are they kind of, because her and Tom are kind of similar just in different fields because he had his outfit for this scenario. Was that her outfit for this scenario? And like Reed said, why was it the black one and not the white one? Was that yeah, the white one her? came off. It mm -hmm. did, but that's not her mom's beanie. It's true. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it is. I mean, he makes that comment about it being from a thrift store. I think it actually is. It's like, Nancy, are we so lost in our identity? We chose none, neither the beanies, or neither <laughs> Drew or Hudson. We dug, We went store brand. <laughs> and, yeah, and we're, threw it we're in the confusion beanie era. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't like I want to know the meaning of the the beanie. Maybe there I'm looking too deep into it, but I feel like it has something to do with her emotional state. Like was mm -hmm. she feeling insecure? Is it her security blanket? Um, I don't I don't her know. Her armor. The beanie has been her armor. Mm. And and then Tom gives her the Balmain dress, and that's gonna be her I'm a rich person now. And um <laughs> oh, God, that dress. It's amazing. Wait, should we flow into Episode Let's get 16? into 16 because yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> yes, I mean, first of all, I, I really like that they gave us, uh, we got to see the dress um, because they put that coat on and it was done. <laughs> got, they, they gave us the um, the moment. But um, as far as the episode goes, my goodness, the fact that it was an episode in which Nancy's racing against her own team to find mm. the answers. So well done, chef's kiss. I love 
angry Nancy. I love her. This is probably way too deep in the episode, but I loved her popping off on them doing her Tyra. I was rooting for you. <laughs> <laughs> Just screaming at them, which was so earned. And I, I loved it. Um, but yeah, they, their first mistake was not telling her anything. Mm -hmm. Like you you have to learn by now. You don't keep information from Nancy Drew. You just don't do that. That's something you don't do because she's like she was saying, she's trying to keep everybody alive and she needs to know all the information. You're like, you're not going to outsmart Nancy Drew. You're just not going to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the fact that when they were all at the gate and they wouldn't share the information with her and she obviously wouldn't share her information with them, that Nancy went, they, they thought they were, uh, they were being better by having um Amanda and get the information with us. Whereas Nancy just got the information from the man at the gate and then strutted mm -hmm. off all like uh, pride of herself and they were kind of in awe of her. But I mean, that kind of just show, showcased the whole episode because they, they act wasn't it Ryan actually said he thinks they're about a half a step ahead of Nancy but she was two or three steps ahead of them the whole time and like you, Nancy is so far ahead of them she's in a different area code yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> that's you just gotta know that about Nancy Nick should have known I don't know why yeah. <laughs> he was just like we, we can't he's like such this. a dad that he's always like oh I'm doing this to protect her and it's like no 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 if you want to protect her, you keep her in the loop mm -hmm. because by you protecting her, she's going to protect. It's a whole circle of protection that like, if you keep her out of it, it's not good news for anyone. It's not. And it's still, and even when she had to make allowances for the, for the places in which she, they had gotten there first, she was still ahead because even when the reporter comes, she's already done taking the picture of the journal. She just tossed Ooh. it back into the car. Yeah. In <laughs> Did that reveal after? That was so smooth. I was, she was like, now none of us can have it. And, like, yes. Yes. and then when they revealed that she had taken pictures, I was like, that's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I never doubt her. <laughs> Ever. And yet there was just a lot of doubt in this episode mm -hmm. and I just don't understand why I um I get that part of it was because um they don't know where she lands with the Hudson thing but it's Everett like it was not going to be a situation in which she was going to ever sell them out in a way that would put them in danger like um so I just don't I mean it made for great tv though for them mm -hmm. to really think that they were ahead of Nancy Drew like no sirs no ma'am like, <laughs> seeing her in that car with her dress on and that with the jacket and just being pissed yes. I loved it it was so beautiful <laughs> <laughs> and it really set the episode did such a good job. I know the show has done such a good job of setting Everett up as this force to be reckoned with because at the end of the day we're dealing with like supernatural zombies whatever and yet this businessman who was in prison for most of the show's run is the big bad the, se the season's done such a good job of setting that up and oh my goodness the dream sequence at the start oh. intense violent shocking and then to pivot right to the end even after we learned all about whatever had done the fact that nah -huh, the real force to be reckoned here with is Nancy Drew incredible like shift of balance right in the last couple of minutes of the episode oh what a sequence did you see Ghost Grandma coming? Because I didn't. No, I didn't. No. I, for a minute, I was like, is she... I knew something was up when she let her into the... um, Whatever that dark chamber meat locker was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know where they were. <laughs> um, But she kept saying, like, I'm not going to fall into any traps. And I was like, Nancy, you're walking into one willingly. Mm -hmm. Um, But that whole scene was... So... Celia was being so bizarre that I was like, are you, like... I was waiting for her to like peel her face off and it was going to be like Everett or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know what was happening. I did not foresee her being a ghost. I know. That was um, a lot. I was like, not Grandma Celia. I, I, <laughs> because I thought like her one ally on the Hudson side that wasn't Ryan, like the, the grandmother who really wanted to get to know her. And I was like, can she not have any older women in her life who support her? Like, can she just I not know. have that? But it was, I know every every pod episode we praise Kennedy, but again, a tour de force episode for her from mm -hmm. the opening to the middle to the end. And that sequence with her and Celia, where she realizes how far ahead of her Everett was and that she was not able to protect everyone that she cares about in the way that she just loses it um is just so amazing. And of course, then it's like, mm, Everett, you've done messed up. Because the one thing you will not do is get ahead of Nancy Drew. And that's why you got teased. <laughs> We're <laughs> on our way to something Oh, else. that was so juicy. <laughs> yeah, she was pissed. 
and mm-hmm. to, to the like, to the level of which it's entered calmness like that's mm-hmm. when you know we're at scary levels of mad because if she's calm while she's mad mm. Mm. this is like smirk. dark yeah. nancy in a way that dark betty on riverdale like that was child's play this is like yeah. a, a different this is like we're like the eyes are glazed over seeing red nancy's like no no she put a bag over <laughs> that man's head and told Gilda to, to let's go i was like oh. <laughs> i you don't know how desperately i wanted to watch episode 17 i was like yeah. where are we going what's happening did she kill him is she I, oh. <laughs> it's so good but uh, on to, to circle back to praising kennedy there were also so many moments of like lightness to nancy too like mm-hmm. when she has that lunch with celia and celia's like tell the the yeah the florist and yeah. she was like i'm oh. definitely not going to do that there are just so <laughs> many like little like nancy isms thrown in to lighten her up and to show that she's still a little bit playful um i really enjoy that yeah and she does it too um with uh george when she calls to get what the name of the black crown tape is because she doesn't know it yet and mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. not george sorry uh bess and she's on the phone with her mm-hmm. and Bess realizes at the end that she just got played <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nancy's so good oh it was such a good nancy episode because we always said that she's kind of like at the center of every storyline at the end of the day she is the title character but like it's it's been a while since it felt like we had like a really like intense Nancy driven episode because and, and it, it, the timing was perfect because we said at the end of last episode how she kind of felt like she lost herself so it, it made sense that this was or not the la- last week's episode that we watched um so it made sense and like of course she played a kind of a supporting role to Tom in the previous episode but what a comeback it was as far as like a Nancy driven episode goes and you knew from Kennedy's performance when uh, Nancy woke up from the nightmare in the beginning scene that it was going to be a tense one and it followed through at hook line and sinker from a critical standpoint like the way they've been seeding the storyline through the past episodes even the ones that have been standalone they're really like now it's on an upward trajectory Mm -hmm. which some other shows have not been doing no we're not going to name names but if you you know if you peer through that shade you might know what i was talking about (laughs) (laughs) but like it just feels like like the the gas is turned on like we're pedaled to the metal for the last two episodes of the season like no turning back now and and we're still seated um the picture that her dad took when he turns it over turns over Mm. the board and she's got claw marks on her arm and it's just like we are like speeding towards this finale and there's still so much to uncover and it makes you very excited for what's to happen next and i too was struggling not to push play on episode <laughs> 17. And there are so many like little things too like i was even loving the new dynamic between nancy and ryan i think that was episode mm-hmm. 15 though mm-hmm. um when they were maybe it was 16 i don't know it was when she was on the phone and he was like are we talking about our my love life right mm-hmm. now <laughs> like the, just like the way that they're finding their footing as like father and daughter is mm-hmm. I, I love it um they're just and also like subtle ace things too like with his car and like <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times he's just like he's just kind of there but he does so much just being there like when he goes to visit amanda's dad in jail like i thought that like he was just sitting there for a while and then like he made his presence known and i don't i just i can never gush enough about the little things in this show yeah and the yes moment not to go back to the previous episode but like when he went up to tom and asked him about his car <laughs> and it was like my name florence it came to me in a dream and it was just like <laughs> awkward silence I'm like so weird <laughs> like this this was my first impression of as back when we watched that episode and i wish i remembered what i thought but what a genius moment it's just so, so subtle it is, and to have that context now of who he is and he's just like he's so brilliant and so yeah. awkward and weird and adorable and it's just a fully rounded character even in that episode where um it's not really an ace episode he keeps popping up to mm-hmm. to be there for nancy and now i understand that <laughs> more because um, i was like why is ace always lurking while, while something is <laughs> happening with nancy's like, oh because he's like her partner in crime i get it now you can't you didn't you out of context for episode um 15 you that's not something that you would understand in context it's mm-hmm. definitely because he knows she's struggling right now and he wants Although to I was be kind of mad at him when he spilled george's secret oh yeah. yeah that was, was very like, easy though 
face. <laughs> <laughs> but then George like didn't care when Bess brought it up. I also um didn't love the base lit base. How me creating a new ship? Best <laughs> um storyline of just like the dating profile. I was kind of like like I for comedy and like to keep it light, it was fine. But um compared to like Feral Bess in in 215 <laughs> and then she's just like have dealing with her dating profile i was like okay whatever um but she's always funny and a delight no matter what they give her yeah without a doubt but i and the, the moment at the end between her and george was really nice because george doesn't really do lovey-dovey kind of anything so that was a really nice moment between the two but i also then struggled with the fact that did odette help her write the dating profile or whatever yeah, and you're like that was yeah. This is we're we're using Odette off screen an awful lot for things that Odette wouldn't do. Um, I know Odette is definitely growing as a character, but like, there's there's no denying the like affection she has for Bass. I know maybe Odette doesn't know what a dating profile is, but you know what I mean. Like, I feel like that story would have played out differently if they wanted it to play out on screen. If that makes sense, maybe I'm asking too much, but you get the point. Yeah, well, because if it was on screen, it would have been I guess Odette picking at George's struggle to write positively in a way that was flowery mm -hmm. perhaps it would have been better if she had said that nick had helped her really mm -hmm. because it, it did seem like something that like nick and her could put together together um not that odette i guess wouldn't help george it just doesn't feel like odette's sad about what happened with her lady love so why would she want her the the lady love that she was trying to yeah. um move on with or, or try something with to move on to she's sad and um, everybody's moving on. So Adept probably would not have helped. Yeah, exactly. I don't, yeah. I mean, it was fine, but I mean, like, I hope we didn't know how to feel about that romance and that was a good thing because it made us feel something even though we didn't know what it was. I hope they don't just like drop it now since we're heading towards the finale. There has to be some kind of resolution with that, I feel. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong in wanting that? No, like a goodbye of some kind when they yeah. finally decide to, unless we're with Odette until season three. Who knows? Who knows? Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they have a lot on their plates for 17, mm. 18. So it might um, have to wait until season three. I'm not sure. But everything else in the A plot was just delicious. I'm very excited. Chef's kiss. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know how we're wrapping this up, though. But we are now on the dark side, and it's going to be so much fun. I can't wait. Bring him down. Bring him <laughs> down. <laughs> yes. Because she did say justice. She didn't say jail. Mm, what does yeah. that mean? Ooh, I don't know. She cooked him. <laughs> she did. That pop, man pop, has a pop. <laughs> <laughs>